Yeah. That brings to the next topic. So what happened with E-Trade today? So I don't e know. If <laughs> <laughs> so they e were smart. The, that red button Drake was supposed to hit, they hit it. Stop everything. Okay, great. Y'all want to run us up? And we just bought uh, TD. We're not going to have billions of dollars of losses on our books. Freeze everything. Freeze it's, it's everything. Game inside of a game. It's your money, kind of. It's like going to the bank. You can't withdraw $2 million out of the bank. Yeah, but imagine going to the bank and not only like it's Monday morning, but the bank's closed and we don't know when it's going to open. Yep. Yeah, but you can go like online. It. Well, online's not working either. So yep. when you if you open and if you had an E-Trade account this morning at probably 9.25, you couldn't log in. 9.30, you couldn't log in. 10 o'clock, you couldn't log in. 10.30, I, could, I finally got in back into the site around 11 o'clock. And I thought it was like, okay, the site's back open. But I started calling around. People still couldn't get back in like 12, 1 o'clock, yeah. 2 o'clock. So thousands of people, thousands of accounts. You Not only was... Allegedly. <laughs> no, that's, that's a fact. Well, we don't know if this is directly... Oh, I didn't say that. Didn't say that. I'm just saying that the, the brokerage itself, the site was down. Is it a coincidence or not? Allegedly. No. And, but also, if you reach your risk disclosures... For incidents like this, they have full right to do what happened by accident or on purpose. But they can suspend trading. They can't close the brokerage. Read your disclosures. I shall. Maybe yes, I shall. Can. Shut yes, it all down. <laughs> because if, if they are the custodian of your capital, they have a right to do what is best as a fiduciary for the client's and for the user base. So this goes to another question. I'm be honest. The first on to you for the first 15 minutes, I thought I was being hacked. <sighs> first 15 minutes, I was being hacked because yeah. I was going on all these threads. I went to Reddit. I went to Twitter. I didn't see anything, and then finally, I saw, oh, the site is down. Isn't this great? Perfect timing. Yeah. So the next question is that okay? So this all right? So this guy comes back out after three years and tweets. Mm -hmm. um, one tweet and GameStop goes up 75%. Yep. And as a coincidence, E Trade sh site shuts down. They went through maintenance. Um, Scheduled maintenance. So, all right. So, this speaks to a broader question of people that have no confidence in the financial system, period. Right. So, we shout out to Principal Travis. We, we're debuting our financial literacy curriculum right now in the yeah. Bronx. Decoding the Matrix. Yeah, for sure. And um, he was saying that they were in a school um, in the Bronx and they were teaching stocks to kids. Like, it's our curriculum, but like he's going through it with them, right? So it's yeah. it talking talk about stocks. So he was saying that a lot of kids, you know, this is something that is a sensitive topic because in the Bronx, specifically in that area in the Bronx, most of the students are immigrants. Right. So their parents is coming from DR. Yeah. Their parents is coming from different Caribbean islands. And a lot of their parents don't even really speak English. Right. They have a tremendous distrust of American banking system. Mm -hmm. So they're like, OK, the kids is like my parents don't even trust banks. You want me to trust stocks. Yep. Right. So. This speaks to something I think we should discuss as far as yeah. having how much confidence can you really put into a financial institution, right? Where, like, I've been robbed from a financial institution before, right? That's happened from Coinbase, but also my, my Chase account got hacked. Yeah. So how, what do you say to people when it's like, well, this is why I don't invest in stocks because why would I put my life savings into something that I can't see and then I go online and then I can't access it for hours at a time or I could have my money in, in some, it's GameStop today. What stock will it be tomorrow? And it, it went up, but what if somebody crashes it, right? Like if one person has enough power to raise a stock 75%, mm -hmm. another person has the power to crash a stock overnight just because. Just, Shout out BlackRock. <laughs> so what's the conversation to people that, you know, have no confidence in financial institutions and they use this as an excuse to not invest? Like, this is why I don't, I don't invest in stocks because I don't believe in it. 
Yeah. And they're going, this is, this, I've heard this before when we announced that black people are investing at a high level. They're like, this is the plan. They're going to get all the black people to put their money in and then they're going to crash the stock market and then they're going to leave you broke. That's a real sentiment that people have expressed. So what's the, what's the take on this? Um, number one, if you have this trust for the financial markets or banks, you should. Number two, they're not going to crash their market to get us out of the market because they need us for liquidation. So I've heard that sentiment too. Now that we're in, it's going to be ruined. No, th that's not going to happen. Now, will we have a, a correction of some sort? Yes. Um, but we need to buy in correction levels and not when everything is being hyped. I get the distrust, but this is what I always tell you. Well, check your bank account every day, multiple times a day. Check your brokerage account reach your disclosures. But if you're not investing in the market, I'm fine with that. But what's your vehicle to get 20, 30, 40% return on your money? If you hadn't checked, inflation is going up like crazy. And a lot of the times people don't want to invest in indexes because it's like, if I'm getting 9% and inflation is 12%, I'm losing money. I get it. But if year over year or over a four year period or half decade, your money is losing 15% of its value in five years. If you don't have a business or another vehicle to, to help it grow, what are you going to do? The value of the dollar from 1920 is went damn near down 90%. So you have to invest it somewhere. But having mistrust, you should. No one cares about your money like you. But if you're investing in meme stocks and you put your life savings into a meme stock, you deserve to get whatever pounding you get. I'm sorry. This is, and, and I get flack for it. Like, yo, you just hating gatekeeping. No, like learn how to invest and trade properly. Don't gamble. Like this is gambling. This is gambling. Like, and the other part that isn't talked about, like Roy and Kitty can't make his way back into that industry. That's why he has to play these internet games. So you should have distrust. Um, as my dad would tell me in boxing, protect yourself at all times. This, this applies here. But if you don't invest your money, what else are you going to do? But a mean stock complaining is, doesn't make anything better. Mean stock only only is a meme stock because it's an influencer that's influencing it. Yep. What's the difference between a mean stock and a blue chip stock? Uh, a blue chip stock is that it actually has real value. I was on GameStop actually three weeks ago with Xander. It was three people in there, including the person behind the cash register. Yeah. But also the people that are influenced it have more influence, right? So a mean stock gets influenced by somebody that's on Twitter. A blue chip stock gets influenced by Jerome that's Powell, yeah. president of but, yeah. when you, Russia. When you, when you say Jerome Powell, when you those are those are economic catalysts or fundamental catalysts or technical catalysts. Not necessarily. Well, so let me let me go. Start. All right. So what's stopping China, Russia? from having a full-fledged campaign to discredit, take down, even if it's 2%, that's billions of dollars of Apple, right? It's, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. And can we be, Ron Kitty, we're, Ron Kitty worked at a hedge fund. He's not mm -hmm. Logan Paul. But I'm just saying, so if, so if one person has that, like anybody can have influence over the stock market, that's my, that's my thing. So yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, it's easy to move this, but, there could be smear campaigns at the highest level for legitimate companies and it could work mm -hmm. and billions of dollars can, and billions of dollars can be lost for yeah. no reason. Not because the company's not a good company because yeah. there's a group of people that for whatever reason they want to manipulate the price. Yeah. But it's not going to. So in that case, right. You're going to see it. Let, let's it may work for one or two days. Right. You're not going to see a 90%, 100% increase on a mega cap company because of no technical reason or no economic factor that led to that callous or that. Whereas this is like, what is the reason? There is no reason. It's just that we saw a tweet and it's running up and people, we, are, people are looking to say, all right, we can make money fast. Now yeah. everybody likes to make money. Great. But that's why, and it goes back to the original question you asked and you led with it, but I think you led with the answer. It's the education around it. You don't feel as confident. There is going to be mistrust, and it should be. But if you get educated on why the mistrust even exists, then you have a better perspective. If you understand why this financial trauma exists, you'll have better perspective. When you understand long-term investing, when something moves up in a day or your brokerage account doesn't open, 
the few hours isn't you're not even okay it didn't open yeah. okay how much money do i have in there how much is insured how much can i get back how many brokerages do i have do i need to look at all there's an education process that yeah. kind of eases some of those tensions and that education process continues, right? So now even Ian saying, go look at the disclosure. I'm aware that yes, they can freeze the market or they can close trading for specific equities, right? But can they close it? Now I gotta go back and educate myself even more, right? So there's always an education process that makes you feel more confident if you're gonna be inside this space. I think yeah, since, since 2020, the answer, I feel like. Yeah, Rashad, back to your point about Russia and China. That's why I always scream Vanguard and BlackRock. And I know people hate it because they're like, yo, give me something else behind two tech, two index. If I own part of Russia and China, you can't do a smear can campaign against me versus something I own. Kendrick's not going to talk bad about top because relationship and money's been made, right? Vanguard owns everything. Panama, waterways, music, prison systems, part of Apple. Da, da, da. So if you are investing in biggest conglomerates, that is the moat. Wow. Like Vanguard is the virtual financial b613 from scandal Vanguard, blackrock everything inside of technology those two Hit, how, how i would answer it is this you, what, what, what are you answering you, you have a probability of getting screwed in anything in life nothing is bulletproof you have a you have a, a high probability of getting screwed some places you have a low probability of getting screwed some places so life is about mitigating risk it's like absolutely it's like getting married <laughs> You still have a probability of getting screwed by the person that you're marrying, right? It's po it's possible. How do you yeah, mitigate the risk to to kind of have low chances of that happening? But you still gotta have your umbrella because anything can happen. So when you're looking at stock, this is why we say bringing this full circle. This is why we say invest in the S and P 500. Yep. This is why we say invest in ETFs. This is why we say invest in the largest companies. Yep. Because theoretically anything can happen. You can I don't want to I, I don't want to fool people and say like you can still lose your money, right? Worst case scenario. But yep. in the worst case scenario, if every stock goes underneath and Russia finally pulls the the big button and well, we're all screwed anyway in that sense. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't even matter. As opposed to the alternative of having hundreds or millions of dollars in cash, that's a that you, that's you're at more of a risk in there. You're yeah. probably going to get robbed or in the case of Nipsey Hussle and Black Sam, where they actually buried the money, Pablo Escobar, it got molded. That's not really the best way to go about it. Yeah. Um, real estate is not 100% safe either, right? We see in California where houses are actually falling off of cliffs. So yes. you, could, you could put all your money in real estate, but you just have to be mindful, careful. And they won't even insure some of them homes now in California. They stop for sure. Even if you put okay, you put all your money in gold, right? Well, that's still a security risk. You got to insure it. And there's no, we don't necessarily know for one hundred percent that gold is has to go up. It has traditionally gone up over the course of the last three thousand years. But anything can happen. People can lose interest. We could discover a new precious metal that surpasses the need for gold. So. Anything is subject to loss. So you as an investor, your job is to actually find the things that mitigate risk the least, diversify, and proceed with caution that way, as opposed to having the most exposure and very risky assets that you have more likelihood of getting screwed over. But you can get screwed over in anything, just, just for full transparency. Yeah. But like I said, if the S and P five hundred goes to zero, is is it is, is it possible? It. Yes, it's it's possible. It's possible you could put a million dollars in the S and P right now, and you will have no money in ten years. That's possible. But if that happens, then life as we know it is probably over, and it who else who has money? Money wouldn't necessarily yeah. matter anyway. Yeah, yeah. you've been walking dead. Um, but it's possible. So, like I said, it, it's just I think we have to actually, you know, speak on that because anything is possible. But like I said, there's really no alternative that's 100 percent safe. There's nothing that you can do that you're 100 percent safe. So I rather go with the 98 percent safe, 97 percent yep. safe yeah. as opposed to the 27 percent safe, 16 percent safe. Now you're playing a very risky game.